everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to another StarCraft 2 video. Now what I got for you today is a Zerg vs Protoss that was recently played over at WCS Austin. Spawning here in the bottom left hand corner of Redshift Alley and playing with the Red Protoss probes. We have none other than our North American hero and he goes by the name of Puck. And his opponent spawning in the top left hand corner, he's playing with the blue Zerg drones. We are currently looking in the main base of Elazer. So this should be a really good match of Zerg versus Protoss. The reason for that is that we are on Redshift Alley and every single one of the pro games that I've seen on this map so far, they get a little bit crazy. The thing is that a lot of pro gamers decide to just simply veto this map right from the get go, but for some reason, and I obviously haven't seen this game, but for some reason in this matchup, neither player decided to veto it, which means that indeed we can have access to that gold base first. Now, I've mentioned it many a times already, but basically on this map you can expect spent really quickly to watch your opponent by going for the gold base that is very easily accessible early on. However, once this base starts running low, like 7-8 minutes into the game, these mineral patches right here on both right sides will run out and with that you sort of gain access to a really easy mid game here as well. And usually that's rather tricky for a Zerg player uh, to deal with when you're going up against the Protoss. Obviously if you can juggle, you know, a war prism here with a couple of units continuously. Uh, um, you can not only just simply get shielding from the mineral patches, but you can also obviously keep your units alive just using the War Prism itself. So this should be a really interesting match. Apparently both players have decided to now go for that gold base first. Buck already taking a Nexus here on the low ground, and we see of course the hatchery uh, very nearby. Like, look how close that is. I can almost show them on one screen here, right? It gets so crazy so fast, and I'll be honest with you, I am absolutely awful on this map myself. I, I've played like a couple dozen games on it, and I think I had like 20% win rate or something. And and those win rates were all going to be a Zerg for the Zerg. So, you know, the thing is, I, I really could not find a strategy that, um, that I could really make work for any of the races, by the way. It's just not really a map that I'm personally very strong on. Anyways, Elaser going for that curious spawning pool placement, all of, you know, almost trying to put it uh, on the top of the ramp. Not entirely sure what the reason for that is. At the very least, Zealots aren't gonna be able to find any great surface area to hide, I guess, in between, for example, like a mineral patch and then the spawning pool. But all things considered, uh, I don't think it really matters all too much. Anyway. All right, so the bases have been confirmed now. Elazer already has 12 or rather 10 workers now mining on this, uh, on this gold base. Oh! <gasps> Dude! I'm sorry, I forgot to commentate there. Oh my, dude! Did you see that? No way! I have not seen someone do that so collect- Oh my, dude, that is so cheeky. That's like a pro build on a pylon. Maybe this is something that players have been doing for a while already, but I haven't seen that yet. Did you see that? So let me recap that. He decided to put down a um, uh, an evo chamber right over there. Then he put the spawning uh, creep tumor right in that in that little nuke. And since a queen always does a step whenever, she oh my god, that is so si okay. That's I was gonna say so silly. That uh, all right. Well now all of a sudden right we see Puck being forced to chrono boost out a. There's a freaking queen harassing probes. I mean none of them are going down. So at least Buck is keeping them alive, but he's now chrono boosting out the Void Ray. It's almost as if I'm doing a viewer submitted game, but this is actually a really important tournament match. This is like a legit strategy that Elazer definitely wants to play. Is he gonna do it again? It almost looks as if he's trying to do it again. Well, this queen is definitely not gonna be able to... Well, maybe, maybe she will actually. There's already one queen here waiting with energy. Yeah, look at that. This is timed out perfectly. Well, is it? Uh, no, it's not. Never mind. Now this one's still at uh, a couple of energy uh, left over before uh, before it could go down. At the same time, the Zerklings are now moving forward. Are you kidding me? A Queen harass in a pro game? And obviously, Laser is just simply gonna follow this up with like a, a Roach Warden and now a third base as well. That was really cool. Whether or not it was actually super efficient, I don't know, because while well, he did deny a couple of uh, couple of probes from mining there for a little while, there's no denying that Puck is severely ahead here when it comes to that economy as well. The crew spread is looking strong, but obviously once the observers come out, this is going to be uh, halted for quite a little while too. And actually, all things considered, I'm pretty sure that Elazer did not actually come out ahead there. I'm pretty sure just simply playing the more standard style, yeah, going for the shield battery for example, it's going to be a lot safer. 
And, uh, I mean, apparently uh, Puck is just happy to pull the probes away for a little while. Seemed like he knew exactly what it was that he needed to do, and from there... <laughs> the Zerk in me got really excited there, thinking, uh, thinking that that, uh, that that queen was gonna be able to kill units left and right for a little while. Maybe, maybe he should have moved that second queen that he had and just walked her all the way around. Sure, it would have taken her some time, but I think she would have arrived. Right? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Maybe you could have tumored right over there and then spread some creep to sort of, like, come and meet her halfway. Oh my god, all of a sudden, strategies are flooding my mind. They're probably all gonna be terrible, but still, I feel badass thinking about it. <laughs> Buck not going for that low ground expansion as well. He's followed it up with three Stargates here in total. Very solid. A lot of Void Rays here coming, out of, uh, coming up already. And I actually really like this. Look at that. There's four Void Rays out already at this point. They're going to be able to use Prismatic Alignment to get rid of those Spore Crawlers in just a couple of seconds. Look at that bonus damage they deal to Armored. Obviously, all structures here are going to be a very good target for those, uh, for those abilities as well. Now, there's a Queen with Energy. Apparently, though, Elaze are preoccupied elsewhere. He is gonna, he's gonna be able to shoot these units away, and it does look like one of the Void Rays uh, fell there as well to the quick Hydra switch. But still, Elazer, he's not quite ahead when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the, I guess the economy here. Well, the third base has not been secured. Puck is actually, he has fallen behind here a little bit in the worker count. Thing is though, Puck obviously is gonna be able to chrono boost out a lot of these units very comfortably. And he's already going for that maxed out Stargate army. At the very least, that's what it looks like, uh, or that's what it looks like he is going for right now. We all know the strength of just a maxed out Protoss death ball, right? It's very strong, and in particular when the units fly. Even though Puck may not look like he's in the strongest position, I actually really like the point that he's uh, that he's in right now. I think it's uh, it's definitely not a not a disadvantage to be in right now. Nice little bit of micro picking up a couple of a uh, couple of these hydros for his troubles as well, using those shields and the high ground here right here to his advantage as well. And with these hydras, right, not really having their upgrades that nicely yet. Well, he did just finish up the groove spines, uh, so that all of a sudden, yeah, does cost uh, that does cost Puck two of those void rays for practically free. But still, a lot of value was picked up there as well for our Protoss player in the red. And more importantly, he's now followed it up with a third base. Now, apparently, he's gonna go for a lot of gateways here, and then also the Twilight Council upgrade, and then the Storm Switch too. So, this is gonna be... This is gonna be Void Ray Zealot, right? Like, for those of you that played Brood War, it kind of feels similar to, like, Corsair Zealot in a way. Basically, the idea is that you push your opponent's units away. The ones that are, uh, you know, strong against Corsairs in Brood War, that is. You just simply uh, push those away, and then all of a sudden you hit them with a whole bunch of Zealots or Dark Templar. There's a lot of potential there. Anyways, Puck now looking to even take another base. For some reason, he decided to go for the Assimilator and their Pylon first. Not entirely sure why that is, but now that the base is running low... Here we go, the Hydra Ball is moving forward. Eight minutes into the game, that is. Still, though, you gotta keep in mind, there are some shield batteries. One of them does end up dying there. Nice little back and forth here between all of those, uh, all of those units. And now, all of a sudden, right, even though Puck did have a nice economy here early on, I love this. He's now gonna have a hard time mining out those minerals. The fourth base has already been acquired, currently unscouted by your laser, otherwise he would have definitely jumped on that, I actually really like that. Storm is not done, now it is. There we go. He's gonna be able to go for the uh, psionic storm right here on the top of uh, all of all these units. Nicely done so far, and it does look like with the help of those zealots, the majority of the hydras will be pushed back, not a great storm, does get land. Gotta be very careful with them, but the zerg swarm is moving forward. Elazer actually is smelling blood. He's trying to target fire down each and every one of those Void Rays. So far, doing a magnificent job doing exactly that. Even with the help of the Shield Battery, the Archon does end up dying uh, very, very quickly. But with more and more Zealot Warpins, I think that eventually Puck is likely going to be able to stay alive. Plus, this base was here all the time. Still, though, these Hydras going to town in the back of the Mineral Line, they've been uh, getting rid of a lot of these uh, units as well. You could actually see Elazer clicking on the Mineral Fields there, just to see if they're mining low. In a way, he actually kind of wants the Protoss player now to continue mining these Mineral Fields, just so he can open up the opportunity. He's actually... Is he gonna start mining from them? Oh my god, Elazer. If you start mining these, that would be so sick. No, it doesn't look like that's the case. It doesn't matter, though, because the Hydras can just simply reach uh, behind the Mineral Line anyway. And that means the Nexus will fall. But little does he know. He's still going up against the three base Protoss anyway. Love that greedy force from Puck. It was a little bit ballsy, right? He was sort of relying on Elazer not scouting up there. But who the heck scouts for like a seven-minute third against Protoss? 
right? That doesn't really ha or a fourth rudder at at 7:30 or so for uh, for a Protoss player. Doesn't really happen very often in this matchup, and I like the way that Puck was thinking ahead. He knew that the Hydras were likely going to be able to clean up that gold, so instead he decides to go for a very greedy additional base. Once again, being very patient with those storms. I feel like this is one of the recent developments in ZVP. People being very patient with the storms. Now, a couple of uh, zealots are moving across the map. This is really nicely done. There's no bailing play or whatever right now for our, uh, for our Zurich. I think he actually could just fight this. These zealots would easily kill all of these hydras, but obviously you don't know if there's going to be any any zerklings uh, on the back of this as well. So apparently he's gonna he's just simply going to run those units away, but that does ward away the majority of the zerk force from the uh, third base of our Protoss player here as well. I really like this. It's so cheeky. It's such a difficult map to play. All right, so. Now that the laser has got his fourth base up, he must feel pretty solid, but he still- does he know about the base? No, he still has no clue about it. He will find out in just a bit, and he will find out that there is a base that is already up and running. He probably expects it to be started up right now, but he doesn't realize that it already was finished a little while ago. Obviously, at this point, that is just simply a really smart play by Puck and a little bit of misscouting there by our Zerk. The Zealots decided to uh, swoop back around. Couple of Hydras trying to push into the natural here as well, but Puck smartly splitting up the units that he's got, trying to get a lot of value out of this. But being really patient with those storms, I really like it. Just simply uh, not wasting them on anything, uh, anything unnecessary. Another robotics facility. So wait, let me get this straight. First off, we see three Stargate, and now we see three Robo? That is kind of insane. Playing his own style, I guess he's gonna go for Archon. Immortal, something along those lines. Obviously, that's gonna be great against both Lurker play as well as, uh, as well as, uh, for example, a switch to watch Ultralisk. But for the most part, right? I really feel like against Hydralisk and Zerklings, I mean, you, you don't really need that many, uh, that many uh, robotics facility units, right? They're gonna be pretty strong, but usually you're gonna be in a pretty hard spot to try and keep them alive. Once again, though. Zealots making their way across the map. They're moving towards the top right-hand corner. They will figure out that a lot of drones just finished up morphing. All of a sudden, Elaze is sitting at 68 workers, which is very, very solid. This one hero, Zealot, holding the line as well, even though he could have been slicing up some of those workers for a little while too. But it does look like Puck is just simply going to sit back, at the very least, relatively defensively. Now, this obviously is an aggressive move out, but he can mass recall at any given moment. Plus, there's still a lot of storm. I actually think with Storm, that army would probably win. And now he's also going to split up the units. Look at this. Really cute play. Right? This is so difficult to do if you're a Protoss. You're so tempted to go for that Death Ball style, which inevitably is going to happen in this game as well, more than likely. Unless the game ends right now. But he's forced to split up his unit, trying to deal a lot of damage here with the several army units at once. Now, these High Templar, though, very, very vulnerable in the back. Same can be said for the High Templar right over here. But um, both players now forced to micro several different fights at once. Storms are going down, which is very nicely done. These High Templar, though, still, uh, you know, at full energy. There we go. They do finally land some of the storms. But I'm not sure if Puck is winning both of these engagements. I think he's winning the one right here in the top right-hand corner. Still, a lot of the Zealots were taken care of already. And once, of course, this army gets cleaned up here on the left-hand side, Elazer is going to reroute the majority of his units towards the top right. But they do get the base, and they will be able to get on out of there. Plus, they mass recall just barely in the nick of time. Elazer trying to do, uh, trying to uh, target fire down some of those High Templar. Interesting move there, though. You can definitely see, look at the macro of Elazer. He's sitting on 1,500 gas. You can see he's a little bit confused by this. He did not quite expect an engagement to come from both sides, and he did end up paying for that with one of his bases. Not sure if it was that much value, though, for Puck, because a lot of these units for Protoss, you don't really want to lose them. Like, for example, High Templar, you really want them to cast multiple storms during multiple engagements, if you can. Another base, though, has now been secured here in the bottom right-hand corner, but this position here, wonderful, uh, wonderful reaction time there by Puck once again, getting himself a really solid storm off on the majority of those Hydras, and it will force them back and likely will now allow his, uh, this base here to live for a little while longer. Is there a War Prism out anywhere? No, there's no War Prism. I would have loved to see that. I think a War Prism at this point would be phenomenal. Still, though, Elazer now doing uh, something very similar. Look at that. Splitting up his Hydralisk. And while the majority of the Hydra Bull will end up taking a lot of damage, that does mean that the base in the bottom right-hand corner will not continue mining because it will be picked off very, very easily. So, at the cost of a couple of Hydras, he did get himself a very nice set of units. Apparently, one of the Immortals there going down as well. All of a sudden now, though, Protoss is setting up a bit of a... A bit of a pincer attack, look at that, so cute. 
Trying to engage this army from two different angles. These High Templar, man, they're being stormed. Or rather, they are storming, and that is a Zurich Massacre. I wonder if it's good to trade like 20 Hydras for one base. It probably isn't. Buck is just simply gonna retake that one as well. And now all of a sudden, right, while there are a lot of... Oh my god, he's gonna land those. He's gonna have to land those storms. There we go. There's a lot of Banelings. All of a sudden, this Zerg army is moving forward and trying to go after the High Templar. Only one High Templar remains. Beautiful uh, warp in there, though. Puck keeping the majority of his mineral line alive for now. Doing a bit of a split as well. And while the rest of the Protoss army is trying to scramble backwards, I do think they will find the majority of the Zerg force once again caught off guard. Wonderful moves here. Puck responding to these moments really nicely. You see that? Like, he had the mind right there to warp in a couple of units to sort of, like, confuse the AI of the Bailings, I suppose, and then moving those High Templar back towards the, uh, I guess, the safety of those robotic facilities. That was really nicely done, and that all of a sudden opens up the opportunity here for Puck to go for a bit of a counterattack. He's once again securing the base here in the bottom right-hand corner, leaving some units here in the back as well. One Changeling actually pretending to be a Zealot there. Right next to a High Templar. This High Templar is sleeping on the job. <laughs> he doesn't even notice right now. I think if there was a War Prism out though, he would have definitely been able to go for some continued harass. At this point, I'm not too sure about it. Hydraling Bane can wipe out his army in just a matter of second. One whiffed storm and it's definitely gonna be the end for these units here. More and more Banelings are coming up. I think that Elazer realizes it right now as well. He's already got that base in the top right hand corner for a little while. Really solid back and forth game. Once again, beautiful storm there. But here come the Banelings. The Banelings are looking for a bit of a pincer right here as well, trying to bait as many of those storms as possible. I don't know if he wants to mass recore or what the plan is, but he is going to be caught with a lot of Zerg units at his front door. Once again, though, trying to get the safety off that mineral count. But apparently, ugh, the majority of the Protoss units there do end up dying. And a laser, while forcing the mass recall, will now be able to continue onwards with the aggression for a little while longer. He was trying to sort of use these mineral patches, you know, to, to funnel in the uh, the Banelings, I suppose, but it didn't really work out that nicely. The Queens are trying to see if they can do some harassment damage, while at the same time, in the bottom right-hand corner, the Hydraling Bane Ball has arrived. Storms are going down. Perfect micro so far here by our Protoss player, really microing back the majority of those units. Trying to stay alive with a very small army here, relatively speaking, and actually supply-wise, Buck is currently ahead. High Templar, though, still running from those Banelings. A lot of the probes are taking critical damage here as well, but they're still alive with just a little bit of hit points remaining. And all of a sudden, right? I actually really like this position that our Protoss player is in. This has been a super messy game. I mean, it started off with a freaking queen harassing a mineral line, right? But now all of a sudden, we're finding ourselves with, you know, 17 and a half minutes into the game, a Protoss player still going up against Hydraling Bane. That's kind of where you want to be at. Inevitably, this Protoss army will max out if he decides to sit back for a little while, and then all of a sudden, Hydraling Bane is not going to be sufficient. Upgrade-wise, we're only sitting on plus one missile right now for Elaser, whereas there's only plus two melee, plus three started up right when I mentioned it here, for Puck, or I guess uh, plus, uh, plus three here, ground weapon upgrades. Still, though, another base has now been secured. The Queens are still going to town as well, one, uh, one drone. Maybe you should take the base over here, but one drone apparently has now joined to the battle as well. This is starting to be really awkward. I can only imagine how many how many games they've played from this position, right? I mean, this map is relatively new. In particular, when this uh, tournament was played a couple of days ago, I don't think they had a lot of... You know, if you take into account, like, travel time and all that, I don't think they had a lot of time to practice a lot of these maps. Obviously, they tried to, but how many times will you face off against a player who's playing just as scrappy of a game? Right? And both players more than happy to try and take those engagements. Great scout there with the changeling. It will confirm the exact positioning of those High Templar on the high ground. Still feel like a, uh, a War Prism would have been phenomenal here for Puck, though. But there we go. A couple of Zerklings trading very nicely there for uh, for a couple of those High Templars. Still Banelings now moving over towards the bottom right-hand corner. That could be great response time once again. That could be detrimental. But so far, the positioning here. My god, Puck is really impressing me. I mean, I know Elazer is really strong. Right? He's really doing this nicely. Once again, though, giving up a lot of those High Templar. I mean, that's 28 High Templar that have gone down in this game. That is ridiculous. Tw Did I see that? Yeah, 28. 28 High Templar. Still, they're somehow trading efficiently against 252 Zorklings and 136 Hydralisk. With a couple hundred Banes there as well. Finally, a War Prism does come up. That does, like, it's not necessarily gonna, like, change the game, but it will force Zerg players back for a while. 
And obviously not if you just simply give away that warp prism for practically free. But the thing is, as soon as a warp prism is roaming the map and another one immediately gets started, Zerk is forced to leave some units at home and really be careful about this scenario. Are these drones mining from the gold? Are they? Oh my god, he's trying to mine out this one mineral patch. He's trying to mine out that one mineral patch so he can send Zerklings into the main base. I think that's the plan. Are they mining this mineral patch? Or just any of the ones over here? I guess they may have rerouted. I think initially they may have been over there. But regardless, big force trying to clash with another big army. Storms are good so far, but Puck, he's going to have to be careful. Elazer is now getting close to maxing out. He doesn't have a lot of upgrades, though, which is really kind of common to play once this army does max out. Two maxed out battles, obviously, or two maxed out armies, rather, are gonna, you know, are gonna make uh, much better use of, of upgrades than you would normally expect. Even a hatchery now gets started up over here. Is this Envision? It is not, so Puck doesn't know about this hatchery. That means that these, these, uh, these mineral patches are gonna mine out very, very rapidly. And all of a sudden, you're dealing with a whole bunch of Zerklings here in your main base. Looks like Puck is actually gonna check. Just to make sure that he knows about this still. Storms are coming up everywhere. Buck is splitting up his units wonderfully, but I can't help but wonder when these Banelings are going to roll into the High Templar and just end the game. Speaking of which, once again, they're threatening to do so. A couple of High Templar will join the rest of their brothers as well. New Nexus was just now secured here by our Protoss player. He's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Still, those storms are dealing so much damage. A couple of Banelings, though, finally connecting now on those High Templar. And while Elazer is now fighting in a massive, massive, you know, concave, right? I can't help but that he's getting ahead. Right? I, I can't help but feel that he's getting ahead here. Still, the base is going strong for now, but it does look like the Zerklings. A couple of them will run away, but the majority of them did l stay there for a little while longer to get rid of that Nexus. And eventually, right? This is sort of like soft containing a Protoss on a very small amount of, uh, of bases. Eventually, all of the bases that the Protoss does have, they're gonna run out. Great transfuses there to try to keep that Hydralis again alive for just a little while longer. At the same time, though, the hatchery has now finished up. And he, oh, dude, it's 11 minerals on this one mineral field. That's nothing, right? Those are going to be mined out very quickly. There we go. That is only one trip remaining. And I don't know if Elazer is going to be able to make use of that. But once he realizes it, I think he's going to be in a great spot. While his army is right over there, he immediately pushes forward. Zerkin is now headed over there, where the majority of the army of the Protoss is now caught on the right-hand side of the map. Looks like he's not going to slow down now, with Zerkin all of a sudden moving towards the main base. Instead, he's going to go for an aggressive push-out. I do think that this is the correct choice. Deal with this with reinforcements instead, but there's no denying that the majority of the Hydra is going to also moving back once again. Still, Puck's army, absolutely phenomenal. It's very strong. It will be able to pick up a base with just a couple of units, shooting away at it just because of those insane upgrades that he's got. Puck's supply wise behind but army wise he's actually pretty much even and in upgrades he's gonna be ahead zerk now also mining out all of the bases that he's got 30 drones here in the top right hand corner of the map zerk is now going for the counter attack instead hydra's helping out as well forcing the council on those bases zealots holding the line here and it looks like they managed to deflect the army in the main base here as well Elazer now mining the golden minerals that his opponent didn't take earlier and all of a sudden we find ourselves in a really awkward spot looks like mass recall may have very well been forced that does mean that Puck is going to have the majority of his units back home once again while cleaning up a base, knowing that his opponent is going to have limited amounts of mining here as well. This is such a sick game. I don't actually know who's ahead. Once again, he will try and attempt to take that base over there. But Zerk can easily just push into the main base, right? And this is where all of the important tech structures are, with the exception of, I guess, the robotics. Looks like the couple of Hydras, though. They're now shooting away at those Archons. Archons desperately trying to get some of those Banelings to roll forward as well. They can take like 18 Baneling hits each. Although I don't really know exactly how it works out with these exact uh, upgrades. Here we go though. Zerklings once again making a move for it. A couple of probes now rerouted towards the, uh, I guess, fifth base here of our Protoss. He really needs to try and get this one up and running. Once again though, those storms are insanely good. Elazer is ahead supply-wise. And he's doing a great job splitting up his units, right? But I can't help but wonder how this main fight is going to go. Because these are... This is not a very big force, but it's not to be underestimated. Still, though, these Banelings, man, they're hunting. Beautiful storms once again. We'll be able to get rid of the majority of them for practically free. Reinforcing Zealots will be the one tasked... Or will be the ones tasked to uh, to force these Hydralisk back. And while Elazer is continuously trying to get value, he doesn't really get it. He doesn't really get the value that he's looking for, and Puck may finally be able to finish his base and start mining from it. Oh my god, this is so sick. I have no clue who's actually ahead. This game can be over in just a split second, depending on Banelings and Storms. But it could be in either, in either advantage. It's really hard to call right now. 
one zone or one uh, one storm right there just for zoning. But here we go, the base finishes. I think High Templar or rather uh, Hydras can probably deal some damage here from the high ground as well. Still, once again, that reinforcing army is gonna move over here. Couple of the War Prism units now coming out as well. They're gonna try and go after the Zerg's main base at the exact same time. That will force that counterattack once again back. And apparently Puck, he's feeling brave. He's moving forward right now. Now a lot of the drones are now rerouted towards that newly acquired base of uh, Elazer here as well. Bailing's trying to take some of those High Templar out. Once again, it does look like they managed to land some pretty decent storms, the High Templar that is. A lot of those Immortals are dealing the damage. There's not a lot of Zealots here ready to reinforce this. Still, a couple of them will be warped in and more and more High Templar ready to cast those Psionic Storms. They are providing so much value and what started with a Queen push, right? I think it's all gonna come down to this point right here. Both players desperately trying to mine resources. Neither of them really have a lot. Zerklings and Hydras coming from every single angle. There's not a lot of Protoss units remaining, but neither is there a lot of Zerk. Those Storms are absolutely phenomenal. I do think that he wants to morph in a couple of those Archons. There we go, but they are morphing in at the very front. That does mean that the Immortals are going to be able to deal a little bit more damage. Hydras, though, still dealing a lot of damage from a distance. Eventually, Puck's army does get taken care of, but Elazer is the one who obtains the victory in an extremely well-fought game. What a sick match. Once again, right, this proves that well, I don't like playing Redshift myself very much whatsoever. The games that happen on this map are absolutely phenomenal. This was so good. I love that. I hope you did too. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe the little bell icon as well so you get notifications as soon as future videos go live. I don't know that if you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. If you didn't like it, which I would be, you know, if you if you watched all the way until this point and you didn't like it, I guess I guess you're free to hit that dislike button as well, but I don't know, like, what are you doing with your time at that point? <laughs> but anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I will see you once again in the next video.